When we talk about aircraft performance, thrust, drag and weight are the parameters that will drive the results. From these, weight is easy to measure and we always know what it is. We can get some drag estimates from either CFD or wind tunnel or even a combination of both. And these will get us a pretty reasonable result, at least for a few flight regimes. With thrust is a different story though. If we talk about a gas turbine, thrust is going to be the result of a very complex machine that needs to ingest air, compress it, add the correct amount of fuel, burn it with low enough emissions, harvest a lot of the energy to drive the turbine, and use the remaining energy to expand the gas through the nozzle and generate thrust. And all of this is influenced by the speed you're flying at, the temperature of the air, and the density. This is to say that creating a model of a gas turbine is not as straightforward as one might think, and it, we will take a few videos to get there. But why do we need, why do we want an engine model in the first place? Especially in flight tests. Wouldn't it be simpler if we could measure thrust directly? Well, yes, but that's even harder. For instance, if we're talking about takeoff performance, the takeoff field length is roughly proportional to T minus D over W. And if we know the engine deck and we can estimate thrust, then we will be in a better position to estimate the aircraft performance. The same will happen with many other parameters, if not all of them. So thrust is king for performance. This is going to be a series on turbojets, where we will build a working thermodynamic model of each one of the components. And later on, we'll see a much more complex code developed by NASA that will actually enable us to estimate parameters for turbofans. So without further ado, let's dive right in. 3, 2, 1, top 3, 2, 1, half, the flight test engineering channel. Let's start with a brief recap of a basic gas turbine cycle. If we think about an aircraft jet engine and the thermodynamic cycle that it operates in, starting with a simple turbojet engine, as the one that we see here in the clip, we'll have the inlets responsible to feed air to the compressor, which uses then mechanical energy to compress the air up to a pressure ratio, and deliver that compressed air to the combustor, where fuel is going to be added and burned. That mixture that has a lot of energy will be expanded in the turbine, which will extract work enough to drive the compressor. And the remaining energy is going to be expanded in the nozzle to generate thrust. When searching for jet engine thermodynamic cycles, most of the time we'll find a model that considers an ideal gas and no losses throughout the process. An isentropic machine. So, for this absolutely ideal cycle, you often see a plot like this. Don't worry, we'll get to the code later. Let's focus on the thermodynamics for now. And we have entropy on the x-axis and temperature on the y-axis, with constant pressure lines shown in bluish, and then the thermodynamic cycle shown in red. What we see here in the graph is that the compression starts from 250 Kelvin, and bumps up the temperature roughly to 600 K. Then we burn the fuel and the temperature rises to 2700 K. And notice then that the entropy rises considerably in this change. Then we expand the gas through the turbine. And during this expansion, the temperature drops as expected. And like we said, of course, this is an ideal cycle with no losses, but that's very far from what really happens. So, these typical assumptions simply won't cut it for us, and instead, we'll look at a much more realistic scenario. We'll add viscous friction to the fluid going through the inlet, losing energy and pressure. We'll say that the compression has its inefficiencies and will use more energy than the ideal process. The combustor will need a lot of turbulence in its flow to keep the flame lit, so it will also lose pressure. And the turbine will produce less work than expected in an ideal process. And finally, the nozzle will also dissipate energy when accelerating the flow. And with all that, in reality, the cycle looks much more like this when we introduce the many losses. Let's build on top of this concept and break down each component, the inlet, the compressor, the combustor, the turbine and nozzle. 
And then we can introduce the inefficiencies to approximate better what happens in the real world for each of the components. In the following videos, we'll build the equations and Python code that will allow us to have a better understanding and insight in, into the operation of the turbojet. I hope you stick around for the journey and see you in the next video.